All right, so you have an Arduino board, fantastic. In this lesson, you are gonna learn your way around the Arduino board. You'll also learn three different ways to power most Arduino boards. Let's go. Hey, before we get started, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It doesn't cost you but a click, but it really helps us bring you great content like this Arduino workshop. All right, so now let's take a look at an Arduino board and talk about the stuff that's on it. Like, have you ever rented a car and you check out its features, like what side you put the fuel in, where do you adjust the mirrors, like that kind of thing? That's what we're going to do here. So what I've got is an Arduino Uno here. This is what we're going to use as our base for talking, right? First thing first, the whole thing together is called a circuit board. Yeah, I know you probably know that, but hey, just in case. The most important thing on this circuit board is this big black rectangle that has a bunch of metal prongs sticking out. This is the microcontroller. And again, it is the most important part of the Arduino board. In fact, an Arduino board is a microcontroller development board. It's designed for you to take advantage of all the cool features on that microcontroller. Now, depending on the board you have, the microcontroller might look a little different. It could be smaller, and the metal prongs may be really tiny. Not to mention, it could be a completely different microcontroller than the one on the Arduino Uno. And just as a reminder, the microcontroller is the brains of the operation here. It's what's gonna be taking the code you write and applying the logic. So those metal prongs I was talking about, those are called pins. These pins are how the microcontroller communicates to the world. Many of the pins can be configured or like set up, right? to be inputs or outputs for reading sensor values or for controlling stuff. And those pins are called the GPIO. That stands for general purpose input output. Now the way the output pins work is by adjusting the voltage at the pin. The way the input pins work is by reading a voltage applied at the pin. Now if you look at the board, like the periphery, you'll notice these plastic columns filled with holes. These are called pin headers or just headers, and they come in different shapes and sizes, but a lot of them look just like this. Each one of the holes makes an electrical connection to one of the pins that we were just talking about on the microcontroller. And those holes are designed to make an electrical connection with wires and components. So you can stick something into that hole, like a wire or a resistor, something like that, and you don't have to solder stuff to the microcontroller. You can just make a temporary connection using this pin header. Now let's say you have an input device, like a button. You can hook it directly into one of the pins on the Arduino board. Or if you have an output device, like an LED, you can connect that directly to the Arduino board as well. Oftentimes, people will use a breadboard when they're working with an Arduino. That's a place where you don't have to solder your circuit together, you can use these little wires called jumper wires to make different connections. They're super handy. If you don't have one, I would recommend getting one of those as well. Now, depending on the Arduino board you have, the pin headers may be labeled. Let's take a close look at this Arduino Uno, which has labeled headers. On one side, we have the digital pins labeled zero through 13. These pins can be used for reading on off type inputs, like if a button is being pressed or if it's not being pressed. We'd call that a binary input. Not only can they read inputs, but they can also act as outputs, which means they can source voltage. So if you turn a pin on, which is called setting it high, then the pin can source five volts. If you turn it off, called setting the pin low, then it can source zero volts. And what this allows you to do is control different electronics like LEDs, buzzers, and it also allows you to communicate with other devices using different protocols. Now, some of these pins have special purposes. For example, pins zero and one are used for communication with the USB port. They're marked with a TX for transmit and an RX for receive. There's also two tiny LEDs on the board marked TX and RX, and those LEDs will flash on and off when signals are being transmitted on those two pins. Some pins also have a little squiggly line next to them. Those little squiggles mean that the pin is capable of pulse 
with modulation or PWM. And what PWM does is turn the voltage high and low at different frequencies. And this is useful for driving inertial loads like motors and also for fading LEDs on and off, as well as controlling things like servo motors. Now, if you look at the other set of pin headers on the other side of the board, you'll see two sections, one marked for analog in and one for power. The analog in section has six holes, and these are places where you can connect and read analog inputs. So before, remember we said the button is either on or off that binary input? Well, analog is when you have a continuous signal. And there's lots of sensors out there that have analog outputs. To read those analog outputs, you can use these analog input pins. And that's because the microcontroller has an analog to digital converter on it called an ADC. These pins right here are connected to the microcontroller's ADC. An example of a sensor that might output a variable voltage is a temperature sensor. So as the temperature changes in the room or wherever, the voltage at the output pin of the temperature sensor is going to adjust. And if you have that output pin connected to the analog input pin, then you can read that variable voltage and then use code to translate it from a voltage to an actual temperature. Next to the analog in section, we have the power section. Here you'll find two pins marked G and D. G and D stands for ground, and that's the lowest voltage on the board. You'll also see a 5V and a 3.3V pin. The V stands for voltage, which you probably guessed. And you can use these as a voltage source for small components you connect to the Arduino board, as long as they don't draw too much current. Now we're going to skip all the other pins for now and talk briefly about how you can power this Arduino Uno. There's generally three recommended ways. You can provide power through the USB port, you know, just by like connecting the board to your computer, or you can power it through the DC jack. So that DC jack there is a 2.1 millimeter center positive plug. And you can connect a power supply to it, like say five AA batteries or one of those wall wart supplies the voltage limit on this DC jack is about 7 to 20 volts, but you're better off limiting your voltage to about 12 volts. And that's because there's a voltage regulator on the Arduino board. And if you supply a ton of voltage, then it has to dissipate a bunch of heat, and that's just lost power and excess heat that you don't need. So I'd limit it to a 12 volt output. I'd also recommend a minimum output current of one amp. That's a thousand milliamps. More is okay, but less can be an issue if you start hooking up a bunch of stuff to your Arduino board. Now, if you look at that power section again on the pin headers, you'll see a pin marked V in. This is where you can hook up an external voltage source to the board in order to power it. This has the same limits as the DC jack. So we're talking about that seven to 20 volts. Again, limiting it to 12 volts is a good idea. The final pin I wanna talk about is the reset pin. If you apply a low voltage to this pin, it will reset the Arduino board. Same thing with that reset button. When you press it, that's gonna reset the board as well. And that's like turning the power off on like some electric device, right? You just turn it off, turn it back on again, which is totally fine to do with an Arduino board. All right, I know that was a ton. You probably have more questions than answers. The truth is there is a ton to learn we just barely scratched the surface with all the stuff that's going on with our Arduino board, but hopefully that gives you a taste of the most important things you need to know on the Arduino board right now. You're going to have a basic footing so that we can start writing some code and actually make this Arduino board do some stuff. Now, in order to get code onto this Arduino board, we're going to be using the Arduino IDE. Next, what we'll do is get the Arduino IDE set up so that we can start writing code and get it loaded onto the Arduino board. We'll run through a couple example sketches just to give you an idea of how this whole thing works. Before you go, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could click that like button and I'd love if you'd subscribe to the channel. It really helps us bring you great content. Finally, if you have any questions, and I imagine you've gotta have some questions because this was just a ton, please leave your questions in the comments and I will do my very best to answer them. All right, I look forward to getting the Arduino IDE set up with you here shortly.